Fit. <clears throat> May it please you, my lord, I appear for applicants one, two, and three. I please don't record my lord, I'm still on record as before. There are two call pieces for five and six respectively. Uh, Your Lordship, before we proceed, there was that issue yesterday regarding the indictment, the charges. Um, I've been informed that there is no objection to it being submitted there as an exhibit before court. Can that be exhibited? Let the other colleagues confirm. I see Mr. Patela shaking his head. Okay. Yes. Mr. Sonny? Perhaps, my Lord, I should. I am the person who informed my learned friend that we had no objections. Lord, I, I just want to place this on record. I didn't realize that the document that was being submitted is in fact annexed to the affidavits of the uh, applicants in this matter. So obviously we cannot object to it. And I inform my learned friend to that effect this morning. Having considered that they are the same document. So I confirm, my Lord, we have no objection. Mr. Patella? Well, look, we know that this is um, an indictment. <coughs> we all know and understand what it means and what it pertains to. The difficulty is that appropriately all documents that should be part of the record, particularly the ones emanating from the state, we have to do so at the beginning of the proceedings. So that my client that was here understand if he has one thing or two to say, he can also be given the opportunity to say something about it. Now we are very late in the game. My client has already testified a new document is being introduced into the record, which he never had the chance to. Is it really new? It's new, my lord. For what, is new, no, what is new about For it? For purposes of these proceedings. It's now, new. remember, even when your client testified. Yes, my lord. Um, there was a question as to what is new, uh, because remember, he, he also came and said he is coming on the basis of new facts. Yes. And one of the questions that I asked about the new facts, and then you said um, the indictment, something has been added to the indictment. Yes, my lord. So, which means you got it from that indictment. You had, your client had access to it. He had seen it. Yes, my lord. Uh, but just for comfort. So there is nothing new about it. Yes, my lord, but for purposes of these proceedings, as a document that has been introduced formally before this court, it's a new document insofar as we are concerned. And remember, so, just also keep in mind the submissions by Mr. Sony. Yes. That some of these documents are attached to the affidavits of the applicants. So it becomes, how do I rule it out if it's part of, of or an annex to the affidavit? That is in order, my lord. But what I want to point out is as follows. Although we are many applicants, representing many applicants that appear before the court, I allude to his lordship's initial observations at the beginning of these proceedings, when you indicated that a bail application is an individual application. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not, although it may appear like a group therapy here, but mm -hmm. it's still an individual. So what the other parties do, mm -hmm. uh, and what they concede, uh, while it may look quite convenient, I still have to be careful that I have a certain mandate to represent my client to the best of our ability. Mm -hmm. So the point that I'm making is that Insofar as the other parties, if they don't have objection, that is for them. But for us, we have, and we'll raise this at the end, my lord, because we, the testimony is still going on. It may be a bit premature. But when we make submissions, if we come out and say we object to this portion, I don't want it to appear like we misled the court and our colleagues. We adopted it. We agree to it. And now when we make final submissions, we are showing a different stance. Okay, so I'll, I'll get to that bridge when we as it pleases the court. Hopefully we'll cross it. As it pleases the court, my lord. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yes. Uh, my lord, so maybe perhaps I must also <coughs> give them the opportunity. As far as Article 5 and 6 is concerned, my worry will be at the end of the day that as far as the indictment is concerned, my client, more particular, number 6, have not been challenged on anything in the, in the indictment. Not, not a single question had been asked. 
as far as count one or what the count may be, it was just a general statement. That is the only observation that I'd made. But if the court at the end of the day rule, we will address that issues when the need arises. As the court is. No, no, you, talk, you, you spoke of your client has not been challenged. Challenged by what? Challenged in terms of meaning that in, according to indictment, count 40 relates to theft. Any comment on that particular score? Nothing. During cross-examination, it no, no, those, are, those are issues that you can address me in submissions. No, indeed, so just make yeah, that observation. Because remember the state's witnesses are still in, in, in the box. We don't know what they're going to say about your witnesses. So if there is an issue, you can address me in argument at the close. Indeed, my lord. Sir. Yeah. As the court cases. As it plays the court, your lordship. Um, I think the main issue here is just the issue of relevance of this document. And it's relevant in so far as all the applicants are concerned in this case. For Mr. Patel had said that this is, does not apply to his client. As the court indicated, he is the one who said that there are new facts, there are new charges. So they were referring okay, no, no, Mr. You, you, you can't keep on flogging the same horse. Yes. Yeah, so we, I've, made, um, I've given an indication where I'm going to hand up the document and we move forward. As it is a court, yes. Your Lordship. So I, I guess I don't need to remind anybody again as regards the house rules that we have adopted, no cell phones on in court. Uh, if, if you need to do something, just alert me, because I have, and the instructions to law, law, enforce of, uh, law enforcement officers still stand. They see a cell phone that is on, confiscated. Has it been the court? Yes. So if there's anybody, because I'm, I'm seeing some of the members of the media, if there's anything that you want to do, you can just ask one of the legal practitioners here um, to advise me on what it is that you want, and then I'll deal with it at that point. Yes? Exhibit the court. Um, your Lordship, will this be Exhibit X? Yeah. yeah. I said I, yeah. It's UV XYZ, yeah. And the indictment is then admitted into evidence as exhibit X. Sorry. Um, which, which exhibit is this? Is it the, the indictment or the the indictment? All right. Thank you. It's the indictment. Yeah. Just hold on before you proceed. Just write it. But no file I will exhibit them. All right, you may proceed, Mr. As it pays the court, um, the state just requests for the witness to be reminded he's under oath, your lordship. Yes, uh, Mr. Naka. Nakanyangela, they are still under oath. Um, sir, do you have that document before you, the one you were dealing with yesterday? Yes, I have the, the document before me. All right, um, you dealt with page two of that document. Can you take us to page three? <coughs> what is the Sorry, thing? Sorry, my lord, I don't want to disturb my learned friend, but is it not appropriate that we give this file an exhibit number then we when we are dealing with the record we know the, the file is exhibit Y and then the documents that will be admitted will be on Y1, Y2, Y3 until it's, it's just a proposal yeah. uh, it's, a, it's a workable proposal as it pays the court so yeah. this document will then be exhibit Y no not the document the file is, is exhibit Y Y but the documents, because it, I'm not accepting the whole file, those documents that are relevant, will then, the ones that you want admitted, we will refer to them as Y1, Y2, until you finish. As it is, of course. Yeah. Uh, 
All right, um, on the third page. Uh, if we can just get direction from the court, we will be marking this as we go along or at the end, at the very end. No, you see, I don't know if, if we say at the very end. I may not know what it is that you want admitted and not admitted. So once you have gone through a document with your witness and you want that document admitted, ask for it to admit, be admitted and we mark it as why something. As you say, the court, your yes. um, I think maybe then we can just start with the very first document we dealt with yesterday, yes. which is indicated as page one. Yeah. That's exhibit Y1. And page two as well. Mm -hmm. Y2. As you say, the court. Um, on the third page, what is depicted on that page? What the page? What is depicted is not on Utility Angola, which is in, which was attached to the email. This on page two. That came from Sankos Edward Shangala to Johannes Stephenson. All right. And what is indicated in the first paragraph of that document? The first paragraph is reading as follows. The Minister of Fisheries and Human Resources of the Republic of Namibia, MFNR, and the Minister of Fisheries of the Republic of Angola, MOFRY, agreed to reciprocally invite a private sector participant from each other's country to exploit resources as a joint venture, JV, effort in their respective countries within the framework of the rules of the respective countries. All right, and what is the heading at paragraph five? The heading of at paragraph five reads corporate and legal matters. And what does paragraph five say? Paragraph five is saying principally JV is between Namibia and Angola nationals. This is within the context of the SADC protocol on fisheries. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, your Lordship, there's a also request for that to be marked as an exhibit. Exhibit Y3. As it plays a court. And when you move on to page 5, what is depicted on that page? On page 5, this is an email. That came from Mr. Charles Edward Shahlala, dated 19 September 2013, sent to the email addresses joadeveros at hotmail.com, Francisco Antonio Santos, James Atulkuriki, Tihatukulipi at gmail.com, Ricardo at tunganam.com. And it was also copied to Johannes Stephenson. Mm. This is the subject to read Nangomar Pesca SA notes. And indicate there are also an attachment that was attached from the email. Sale allotted summary and action points. Re Nangomar Pesca. Mm -hmm. And what is the content of the email is reads as follows. Please find here in L cost an annotated document for your action. We will be in Rwanda during October 16, 2017, 2013. We look forward to meeting as a group. Permit me to introduce you, Joa de Barros, son of the Minister of Fisheries of Angola. Joa, I look forward to engaging with you and welcome to the team. Let us make this happen. Okay. 
And what is on the next page? The next page is a summary and action page. First meeting held September 18, 2015. Ministry of Fisheries, Rwanda, Angola. Um, is that the attachment to the email that you just read, read now? That's correct. Okay. Um, can you just take us through the first portion of that attachment? So the first portion of the attachment is with regard to the establishment of the GV company. My note, this page, it is having some parts which is not clear. Okay. Do you I'll just uh, make myself a copy which is clear. Mm -hmm. In the original, that was attached to the statement of the no, Mr. Stephenson. You have it with you? Yeah, I have it with me. You must then give that copy to all the players. Um, your Lordship, is the court's copy clear? Um, not really that clear. There are, there are issues that are faint. Yeah, there is a line, I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, eighteen lines that are very, very faint. As it I can't the see, make out anything. Um, then we also just request him to provide one copy for... Okay, let the legal practitioners for the applicants first see it. As it is the court, your lordship. Um, is the court order here? If we can get those documents. Mr. Patella. Mr. Sonny. Well, I can read what's here. <coughs> uh, but I'll, I'll make my submissions on the document itself. But I just want to point out that I can read what's here. Okay. Not contrary to, to what was in the previous document, there seems to be something that is readable on this document. Um, Does it appear to be the same document as the one that... I cannot say that, my lord. I reserve my comments up until... But at least this one can be read, while else this one cannot be read. And I'm unable to answer the question whether it's... In fact, those are the questions that I'm asking myself, that it does not appear in all outwards characteristics to be the same document. That's my submission, my lord. Uh, Mr. Ganyangela, is the investigating officer in this particular case, that document which is legible that you provided the court now, the contents of that document, is it the same as the one that is depicted at page six? It's correct, it's the same document. Oh, okay. You can go ahead. As it plays a court. So you left, um, there are only two copies. I, don't, I still have the old. Yes, you know, so perhaps we can, once it's done, we we'll leave with the court, we can provide that to the court. Okay. Um, all right, Mr. Kanyagela, can you inform us what is depicted on the first portion of that document? So the first portion of the document is the establishment the JV company, which is having points from one to four. In point one, 
The JV company will be named soon by the Angola counterparts. Then the next sentence to get said done, Nangoma Pesca SA is the name. The Angolan counterparts replace the signature, signature from Namibia in the special purpose vehicle, SPV, that will take ownership in the GV company. Ricardo Gustavo, James Hatuipuriti, Thompson Hatuipuriti to action, scale and dispatch to Mr. Santos and Joan de Barros. S A S A P. Point number three. GV company will procure services of Samiri vessels. Johannes Stephenson to prepare catch agreement. Point number four. A representative will be identified by the Angolan counterparts for consideration by the Namibian and Icelandic partners, jo, Joan Neto, has been met with. All right. And if you go further required of Namibian authorities, what is depicted there? Under the part of the Namibian authorities, which is for under point 11, 12, and 13, the authorities call to finalize the cooperation agreement for the consideration of the Angolan authority and usage of such as the basis for issuance of quota direct repairs to section 35 of the Marine Resource Act 2000. The two ministers will signed by delegation of powers usually issued to the minister, to ministers by the president or Minister of Foreign Affairs. Draft will be sent to Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources tomorrow. Number 12, the authorities need to confirm to counterpart that minimum of 10,000 metric ton will in fact be issued in the 2014 season. Minister to be briefed today. And uh, number 13, the authorities ought to consider the issues of a hate quarter in Namibia as well, same as close 12 above. Yeah, okay. Um, your Lordship, the same request for the email and this attachment to be submitted as an exhibit, the email from page 5 and the attachment at page 6. Um, can you please give the legible copy for... That will be exhibit Y4. Yes, Your Lordship. On page 7, it's an email that came from Mr. Sigildar Olason with email address cg at scrfishing.com Dated 26 November 2013 Directed to Johannes Stephenson at Johannes at articnam.com tinghappyturity at gmail.com gmo6 
in NAC.com, Joel the Barros at Hotmail.com, or Santos Seventeen at Hotmail.com, Saki at Me.com, Saki One at Me.com. Um, from your investigations, have you established who T Hat Willi P is? T Hat Willi P is Mr. Thompson Hat Willi P. Gmo six. Gmo six is an email that was used by Mr. James Hat Willi P. And Saki one. Saki one. At me.com is an email that Mr. Saki Shangala was using. All right. Um, what is depicted on the next page of that document, page 8? Page 8, it depicts the summary Angola and Namibia project. Mm -hmm. Is that the attachment to the email you referred to? Just for it, my work. All right. Now, in respect to that summary, who are the parties there who are involved? The parties involved from the Samari group, there is uh, an abbreviation of PMB, mm -hmm. which is not really clear whether it is a P or O. Mm -hmm. Then, JS and SQ. Mm -hmm. On the Namibian side, Isaki, Thompson, James. Then Angola, Joao, and the Santos. Okay. And just take us through just the first step. What is depicted there? Step one, which is followed under Namibia. Step one is C frozen, then bullet point one. Say SP Nangobal Pesca SA. Under the, there are certain bullets. Oh, okay, there, there's no need to go through through everything. Um, your Lordship, the stage request for the email at page 7 and the attachment at page 8 to be marked as exhibit Y5. Exhibit Y5. As it plays a court. All right. Um, then you can skip to page 12. Page 10 and 11 are repetition. You can just go to page 12. What is the picture at that page? So, it's an email that came from Sakos Edward Shahala at saki1 at mac.com, dated 12 December 2013, to Ricardo Gustavo. And the subject is logo. With attachments, read Nangomal let these cards. Okay. And the rest of that, what does it say? You read apart Nangoma BUS cards and it goes on at the end. What does that say? In the rest thing, Unpatent attachment, triple zero two four dot hotmail, letterheads, no address, PDF untitled attachment, triple zero two seven dot hotmail. Okay, and what is it, page 13? Page 13 is a letterhead and a Nangomal SA Pesca with mobile number 
Okay. Okay, we can read. With mobile number 264-813-587-058 and email address nangomar at mail.com John Albrecht Street, Window West, Namibia. Okay. And then on page 14. On page 14, there are business cards of Nangomal S.A. Pesca depicting Saki Shahara as a director with the same cell phone number and same email address as depicted on page 13. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. As well as the print address. All right. Your box. And what is a before I continue, in your investigations, um, when this Nangwan project was being set up and the MOU, in what capacity was Mr. Shangala acting? When? When in the government or? Yes. By that time, Mr. Saki Shangala was a chairperson of a law reform development commission. Okay. And what is it, page 15? Okay, maybe page 15 and 16, you can deal with them simultaneously. Um, what is depicted there? What is depicted on page 15 is a letterhead of Nangomar S.A. Pesca. Oh, okay. And the address is in which country? Page 15, the address is still the same as I explained. Oh, okay. And 16? On page 16, it's a letterhead of Nangomar S.A. Pesca with no any other additional information. Oh, okay. Um, your Lordship, the state will request for the email from page 12 and the attachments until page 16. Okay, um, I'll, I'll admit it as exhibit. Y6, but then the attachments will, will have Roman number, numbering. Yes, please. Yes, y, exhibit Y6. Then um, the next page will be Roman 1. Uh, 6, Roman 1, 6, Roman 2. If you skip to page 19 of that document, um, can you just inform us what is on that page? On page 19 is an email from Zakos Edward Shahara 
Email address saki1 at me.com. Dated 12 December 2013. To Ricardo Gustavo. With the subject, the letterhead, it will be fixed later tonight. To the SA is after Pesca. Then attachment letterhead nangoma dot doc. Untitled attachment triple zero thirty two dot mail. Mm -hmm. Then the, this email was forwarded from Sakos Edward Shahnala with the same email address. With the subject, the letterhead, it will be fixed later tonight to the SA. So it's after Pesca. So the, not two. So the SA, there's no two. It will be fixed later tonight, so the SA is after. So the SA is after Pesca. Mm -hmm. Dated 12 December 2013. Send to James at Ipulipi at james at hanganeni.com. Thompson, T at Ipulipi at gmail.com. Sigura Olason at Sigi at asiafishing.com. Johannes Stephenson, Johannes at asiafishing.com. Joao Barros. Joao de Barros at hotmail.com Francisco Antonio Santos org.santos17 at hotmail.com And what is the next page? On the next page is the letterhead of Nangomar S.A. Pesca. And the address? The address is indicated as Rua Americo Julio de Carvalho, number 138, Belo Azul, Ingo Botas, Luanda, Republic of Angola. Okay. Um, your Lordship, the state request for the email at page 19 to be marked as an exhibit, as well as um, the letterhead at page 20. Exhibit 7 and Exhibit 7, one room one. As it is a court. Um, and at page 21. Page 21 is an email from James Apikulipi with email address gmo6 at me.com dated 16 December 2013 to Sir Edward Shahnala quoted to Thompson ricardo at tunganam.com with the subject cooperation agreement and attachments cooperation agreement Asia Holdings, Nango Malpesta SA, Shahnala Comments, one, dot doc, untitled attachment, triple zero three eight, dot txt. Then the contact is reading, Hi Saki, Please see attach the cooperation agreement with my comments. I am generally happy with the contents of this agreement. I agree with you. We need this to happen. We need this to be concluded by tomorrow. Regards, James. All right, and what is that page 22 to... Thirty. 
page 22 to 30, this is a cooperation agreement. Memorandum of agreement entered into by and between Summary G, Summary H, HF, Asia Holdings PTY LTD, part of Summary Group, incorporated in Namibia under registration number 2009 stroke 137. 149 Nelema Avenue, P.O. Box 4961, now this by, here in after referred to as Asia, in Vyongona Pesca SA, incorporated in Angola, here in after referred to as Nangoma. Oh, okay. Uh, Your Lordship, we accept the request for the email at page 21 and the attachment at page 22 to be marked as exhibit. Entry at Y8. Y8. I think the attachment is from page 22 to page 30. Your Lordship. That's Roman 1 to Roman 10. As it goes the court. All right, um, can you please move on to page 31 on that document? On page 31, this is a letter. Under the letterhead, in the letterhead of Nangoma, with the business address of Angola, directed to Mr. Francisco Antonio Santos, President do Conselho de Administração Sadepa Angola e Ministra Saki Shahnala, Chairperson, Law Reform and Development Commission, LRDC Namibia, dated December 18, 2013. And its content reads as follow is under the heading Angola Namibia Cooperation in commercial fisheries in the area of the Benguela current large marine ecosystem BCLME. Your efforts during 2013 to strengthen the relationship of marine fishing enterprises from both Namibia and Angola under the general rubric of the cooperation and good neighborliness existing between our two countries, their reference. It is my pleasure to introduce to you an entity, Nangoma Pesca SA, meaning Namibia Angola Marine Fish Company, owned by Angolans and Namibians in the fishing industry prepared to collaborate in both Namibia and Angola waters. We have teamed up with the Sameri Group from Iceland, a leading fishing company, vertically integrated from the fishing grounds to the markets of fish and fish products ac across the globe. Together we intend to broaden the market of for Angolan and Namibian fish, both internationally and within the Angolan and Namibian markets, we therefore look forward to exploiting the marine resources and to contributing to the objectives of ensuring food security, as stated by the ministers responsible for fisheries and marine resources during their reciprocal visits. Sincerely, Mr. Ricardo Gustavo, Director. Uh, Your Lordship, we have a request for this particular letter to be submitted as Y9. Submit Y9. And it plays a court. And what do you have at the next page, 32? Page 32.
Mr. 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 Dated 18 December 2013. Directed to your excellencies, the Minister of Fisheries and Marine Resources of the Republic of Namibia, Honorable Bernard Esau, MP, and the Minister of Fisheries of the Republic of Angola, Madam Victoria de Barros Neto. And it reads as follows. Dear Honorable Ministers, Business Enterprise Cooperation between Namibia and Angola in the fishing sector. Person to the interaction of the respective ministers under the agreement on general cooperation and the creation of the Angola-Namibia Joint Commission of Cooperation of 1990 in particular, the signed minutes of July 2013 in Rwanda, Angola, read together with the Memorandum of Understanding of October 2013, Windup, Namibia, as well as the drafted Protocol of Cooperation on Fisheries and Aquaculture under the general context of the SADC Protocol on Fisheries of 2001, as you had requested of us we now present to you attached here to confirmation that Nangomal Pesca SA has been set up in Angola as a joint venture company owned by Angola and Namibia nationals prepared to jointly exploit the marine resources of the contiguous coastline of the two countries. Nangomal Pesca SA seeks to ensure that Angolans and Namibians are in a position to contribute to food security within the two countries. And we would like to market harvested products into Angola and Namibia to achieve this objective. The Angolan state owned entity, Edi Pesca, fish product distribution company serves as a conduit through which Nangomar Pesca SA will realize the objective. In Namibia, the Fish Consumption Trust has a well-established network that can be replicated by Edi Pesca. The technical services agreement TSA established between Nangomar Pesca SA and Samerich HF capacitated it to harvest and exploit marine resources in accordance with the national legislation and at best practices given Samaris industry leading reputation and footprints across the world. To realize the cooperation between the nationals of the two countries, the Honorable Minister may now designate them under the laws of the Republic of Angola in the Republic of Namibia and issue them access to the marine resources. Do accept, Honorable Ministers, the assurances of our highest consideration. And this letter was signed by Mr. Saki Shaman, Chairman, Law Reform and Development Commission, Namibia, and Mr. Francisco Antonio Santos, Chairman of the Board, <coughs> Fadepa, Angola. All right. The um, motion says also request for this to be Exhibit Y10. Exhibit Y10. Um, can you take us to page 36 of that document? 36. Mm -hmm. On page 36, this is a letter with the letter of the Office of the Attorney General, dated 11 December 2013. Directed to Honorable Bernard Esau, MP, 
Minister of Fisheries and Marine Resources, <coughs> Private Bank 13355, Windu, with the attention of Ms. Uritawa Hivewa, PS, and it reads as follows. All right, um, before you go there, was this document signed? Page 38. Yes, the document was signed by Dr. El Kawana, MP, the Attorney General. Okay. Um, could you just indicate what's reflected in the first two paragraphs of that document? Paragraph 1 of the document reads as follows. We amended the draft agreement. Oh, okay, with, sorry. I'm um, just start from the top part, just on top of paragraph one. We refer to your letter dated 25 October 2013. In our subsequent consultation with your ministry, with regard to the above mentioned letter. Then point number one. We amended the draft agreement in order to accommodate our input therein. Which amended document is attached here to? The electronic version of the document can be emailed to the ministry on request. Then number two, as conveyed to us by the ministry, it appears that Angola prefers a memorandum of understanding which is legally not binding over a legally binding agreement. Yes, it will be untenable to have one party consider the instrument to be legally binding, whilst the other party does not. It is imperative that the two governments adopt a common position on the nature of the proposed instrument. In view of the fact that the proposed instrument appears to some extent in its wording, to be a declaration of intentions regarding cooperations, cooperation in fisheries and aquaculture without specifying concrete legal obligations, we recommend that it be signed as a memorandum of understanding instead of an agreement. Provision is made for the parties to enter under the memorandum of understanding, MOU, into implementation agreements or protocols in which they will specify detailed activities, time frames, and concrete financial and other obligations of the parties. Oh, okay. And what is at page 39 of this document? On page 39, this is a draft agreement on cooperation in fisheries and aquaculture between the government of the Republic of Namibia through the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources, represented by Honorable Mr. Bernard Esau, MP, in his capacity as the Minister of Fisheries and Marine Resources, and the government of the Republic of Angola through the Ministry of Fisheries, represented by Honorable Dr. Victoria Neto, in her capacity as the Minister of Fisheries. Okay. Is this a document that was submitted to the Attorney General's office? Yes, correct. This is a document. Okay. And it goes from page 39 to page 47. Yes, correct. What is at page 48? On page 48 is a memorandum of understanding. Mm -hmm. And what's written on top of memorandum of understanding? On top is written scrutinized 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 copy. Scrutinized, AG. yeah, okay. AG. All right. 
and it says what? Memorandum of, Memorandum of understanding between the government of the Republic of Angola through the ministry of fisheries and the government of the Republic of Namibia through the ministry of fisheries and marine resources on cooperation in the areas of fisheries and aquaculture. All right. And that document ends at page 59. That's correct. All right. Is it a signed document? The document is not signed. All right. And what is depicted at page 60? On page 60, it's a memorandum of understanding between the government of the Republic of Namibia through the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources and the government of the Republic of Angola through the Ministry of Fisheries on cooperation in the areas of fisheries and aquaculture. All right. Now, this particular memorandum of understanding from page 60 to page 72, was this signed? Just correct, this uh, agreement or memorandum of understanding was signed. Mm -hmm. On which date were? It is indicating done at Rwanda, Angola. On this 18th day of June 2014, for the Republic of Namibia, for the Republic of Angola, and the signatories to this document was Mr. Is Mr. Is Honorable Mr. Bernard Esau, MP, Minister of Fisheries and Marine Resources, and Honorable Dr. Victoria de Barros Neto. Minister of Fisheries. Yeah, okay. Uh, maybe before we proceed, uh, with the copy that is written, scrutinized copy. Um, okay. The memorandum at page 48. Um, from your investigations, who drafted this memorandum? Where did it emanate from? Memorandum from page 48. Yes. Just uh, the investigation or the information provided to us, it was said that this uh, memorandum of understanding was drafted by Mr. Saki Shahnala. Um, your Lordship, uh, the staff request for the letter, which is depicted at page 36, to be marked as an exhibit. Only the letter. And in the agreements, there's a draft agreement on cooperation of fisheries from page 39. And then... is the Memorandum of Understanding depicted at page 48, mm -hmm. which is unsigned, and the signed Memorandum of Understanding from page 60, Your Worship. That will be exhibit Y11. Yes, Your Worship. With Roman numerals up to the end. As it was a court, Your Worship. these things in sequential order as much as possible. So can you just take us back to page 33 of that document? Page 33. 
33 is a letter on the letterhead of the Minister of Fisheries and Marine Resources, Office of the Minister, directed to Honorable Dr. Victoria de Barros Nieto, the Minister of Fisheries, <coughs> Ministry of Fisheries, of Fisheries, Rwanda, Republic of Angola which read as follows. Dear Honorable Minister, the heading implementation of the Memorandum of Understanding on cooperation in the areas of fisheries and aquaculture between the Republic of Angola and the Republic of Namibia. And the context is as follows. Once again, I wish to thank you, Honorable Colleague, for the invitation, the hospitality accorded to me and my delegation during my just ended visit, and look forward to a productive collaboration between our two sister ministries and countries. As discussed, I would like to implement this agreement straight away. And as provided under the Marine Resource Act 2000, Act number 27 of 2000, the government of the Republic of Namibia will cause that the agreement is published in the government gazette, and thereafter it is required for us as the fisheries authorities under section 35, subsection 2, thereof to nominate the fishing company or companies that will apply for a quota to harvest marine resources in Namibia waters. All right. Um, and then at the next page, um, you can skip the three on top, the second paragraph. So the second paragraph reads, I therefore seek your concurrence, Honorable Minister, that push on to Article 8 of the Memorandum of Understanding on Cooperation in fisheries and aquaculture, we nominate the Angolan fishing entity, Nangomar Pesca SA, and or its nominee, in conjunction with the Namibian fishing entity, Nangomar Pesca Namibia Pty Ltd, to harvest marine resources in the marine in the maritime jurisdiction of the Republic of Namibia. Upon the receipt of your confirmation, I will inform the entities in writing of our designation under Section 35, Subsection 2 of the Marine Resource Act 2000, read together with Article 8 of the Memorandum of Understanding on Cooperation in Fisheries and Aquaculture. I look forward to your confirmation in this regard. And wish to express to you, Honorable Minister, the assurances of my comradely regards to you. Sincerely, Bernard Esau, MP, Minister. All right. Um, the Lord should be set us a request for this letter to be marked as an Exhibit Y12. Exhibit Y12. Now, insofar as this letter is concerned, was there a reply from a response from the minister in Angola? Yes, there was a response. Okay, can you take us to page 86 of that bundle? Page 86, uh, 86. Page 8.6 is a letter on the letterhead Ministerial Das Pescas, Cabinet da Ministra, 
the elected to Honorable Bernard Esau, MP, the Minister, Minister of Fisheries and Marine Resources, Windu, Republic of Namibia, and it reads as follows. Dear Honorable Minister Esau, confirmation of designation in terms of Section 35, Subsection 2 of the Marine Resource Act 2000 of the Republic of Namibia, read together with Article 8 of the Memorandum of Understanding on Fisheries and Aquaculture. Okay, what is um, depicted in paragraph 2 of that document? Paragraph 2 depicts your proposal for designation of Nangomar Pesca SA and all its nominee in collaboration with the Namibian fishing company Nangomar Pesca Pty Ltd made under section 35 subsection 2 of the Marine Resource Act 2000 of the Republic of Namibia read together with, the, with Article 8 of the Memorandum of Understanding on Fisheries and Aquaculture is agreed. Let us therefore work towards the successful operation of a truly Angolan and Namibian fishing company to harvest our resources for the benefit of our people and contribute to our government's efforts to ensure food security for our people. Rwanda, July 3, 2014. You ask comradely, Dr. Victoria De Barros Neto, All right. Minister of Fisheries. Um, if your Lordship, the Lord should request for this to be marked as Exhibit Y13. Exhibit Y13. Um, now, just to take you back to page 35 of that bundle, what is at page 35? Page 30. Page 35. This is a letter from Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources, dated 27 June 2014. Directed to the director, corporate investment, slash Namugomar Pesca, Roa Americo Julio de Carvalho, number 138 Bayro Azul, Rwanda, Angola. With the contact GSC, nomination for a host marker quota allocation. I have the pleasure to inform you that the Minister has nominated your joint venture, Corporate Investment Pty Ltd slash Nango Malpesca, to apply for a host material quota in accordance with the Marine Resources Act, Act number 27 of 2000, Article 35, Paragraph 2. The validity of this nomination will be guided by MOU on cooperation in the fisheries sector between the Republic of Namibia and the Republic of Angola. Your acceptance of this letter should reach us not later than 2nd July 2014. Yours, Uritala Hivelwa, Permanent Secretary. All right. Um, your Lordship, the best request for this to be marked as Exhibit Y14. Exhibit Y14. In so far as your investigations are concerned, um, corporate investment that is mentioned in this letter, in which country was this entity? Corporate investment is an entity that was registered and incorporated in the Republic of Namibia. Okay. Was there any changes with regard to the name of corporate investments? Okay, the name of corporate investments was changed to Nangoma Desca Namibia PTY LTV. Oh, okay. 
And this Namgoma Pesca Namibia, um, is that the registered address which is depicted on this letter? No, this is not the registered address in Namibia. Oh, okay. All right. Um, can you take us to page 73 of that document and explain to the court what is depicted on that page? Page 73. Yes. Page 73. It is a document with notes with regards to Angola visit. 15 to 22 January 2014. Uh, uh, apologies, Your Lordship. Uh, it appears there's a request for a break from counsel for the applicants, perhaps. We are in the hands of the court, Your Lordship. All right, 15 minutes break. In, in minute. Minute, um, 5 to 12. As it plays the court. You have to give me my, my